This is just the worst thing that could, could happen. I was going to bed most nights and crying myself to sleep. It's kind of like looking through a cardboard tube. I've got no vision in my right eye, so I don't see out of that. He's taken a really tough knock when he lost his sight. He did struggle and didn't think it was going to change. Running really, really helped me with the low places that I was at. I started telling him, you know, I'm going to be running marathons. He was like, nah, not you. I'm trying to emulate what only one person's ever done before. I need the guide runner to keep me safe. I never saw this in my future. It's changed my life. This is going to be number six. This is what we've worked so hard for. Did I train hard enough? Will I let Mark down during this? It's all a crazy dream until you start. And that's all it was, a crazy dream. And then we started something, and here we are. I was always sort of thinking about maybe doing a marathon on another country. I uh, entered the Chicago Marathon. He didn't have a guide to bring with him, so he was just looking, you know, guides in Chicago, saw my profile, kind of thought about it, like, was I ready to run that distance, to run the distance at the pace Mark wanted to run it at, and just decided to give it a go. All right, well, see you in a week. We'll have a big birthday celebration right before the big Boston celebration. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So I look forward to it. I feel like it, just this week really has been starting to hit me that it is so soon. Like even coming back from Tokyo, I knew it was so soon, but it is just here in no time at all. I knew instantly from the moment that we started running together that everything was going to be all right. That was incredible. How do you just say like, I guess that's it. See you later. Is that it? You know, what, what, what happens now? Three months later, he texted me about the Berlin Marathon and yeah, I'm in. And he was like, okay, well, I also got into the New York Marathon. What do you think about that? And I was like, you tell me where to be, I'll be there. At that point, we kind of decided, let's do it all. You know, should we just do it all? And she just said, yeah, let's do it all. I've joked with Mark before that we just keep running marathons because neither of us knows how to say goodbye to each other. You've got myself here in England, then you've got Katie over in America. Two people working for the same goal. It's just a really unique friendship and relationship. We don't train together, but we race together. She's putting a lot of hard work in. I'm putting a lot of hard work in here. I'll let her know that I've been out for a morning run and she'll be getting that information at like three, four in the morning. Mark's done a half marathon this morning. She's waking up to say, oh, wow, I'm going to have to go and do that now. And, and what's it for? It's for me. I live in St Helens, which is in uh, the northwest of England. It's part of Merseyside, which is uh, near Liverpool. It's a town that's been through quite, quite a bad past. The coal mines closed in the sort of mid 90s, resulting in a lot of unemployment and some bad times for people. The fact that the town has been through quite a lot together, the community is quite close. Three scans on each side, okay? Well, that eye's a prosthetic. That one? Yeah. Okay. Did you have tell that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just like, you know. Big wise eye for me. Nice and stuff. I was reading the yeah. newspaper and I couldn't really sort of focus on it proper. The print kept on going in and out of focus. And sit back, you don't. When it very first happened, we were in the kitchen. Mum, I said, yeah. He went, I can't see. I said to him, what do you mean you can't see? He said, I can't see. So I had an eye appointment at the hospital and they noticed that both my retinas are detached. It was very, very quick, you know, finding out and him, and him having the operation. And then when it went wrong, oh, yeah, my worst nightmare. 
I'm going to do three per eye, okay? Yep. Watch. I actually caught an infection at the hospital. It was killing away inside the eye. And I knew something wasn't right, but I was told that everything was fine. It was only picked up on the third time that I went to the hospital. I was treated immediately with emergency surgery. Yeah, thank you. I've been given a prosthetic eye in my right eye now. And unfortunately, after that, I developed another condition called keratoconus. So what we're seeing is the shape of that cornea is much steeper. It's a much steeper dome than mm -hmm. it would otherwise be. And the reason why that's happened is because of the keratoconus disease. Yeah. Doctor said that there's two options for me. We could kind of keep going on with the contact lenses, which are currently working rather well for me. Or we could do a cornea graft. The risk with that is my eye may reject the cornea. That could cause me more issues than I have now. We won't go down the surgery route for another year at least. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay, you're gonna do, do it. Why not? Definitely. You can. Me and Diane have been together for over 20 years. She also supported me quite a lot while I was going through my sight loss. So we've been through quite a lot together. My sister Sarah, she's always been really close to me. It was devastating for like everybody as a family to find out, obviously, you know, what he was going through. I did a race with my husband and my mum. We wanted to raise some money for the charity that had helped Mark. That was a massive thing for me because I'd never done anything like that ever. My sister collapsed a little bit after the line and she was carried, you know, to the side of the road. And that really was a wake-up call. And she was doing that for me. Mark watched us run and was in absolute tears, absolute floods of tears. Watching us, he thought, do you know what, I can do that as well. And that inspired him to do his first run. And we've just spiralled from then. The fundraising was creating something that was positive and the running was giving me things to focus on. Uh, I wasn't really coping very well mentally. Be honest, I didn't think you had it in it. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. I the number of times you said, oh, I don't know if I can do it, don't know if I can do it. I think it's pretty remarkable, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. We're all dead proud of you. We're all dead proud of uh, Katie as well, mm -hmm. because without Katie, he couldn't do it, could he? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, good luck to you and Casey. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. It's just Cheers. 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 There's no better place to run in Chicago than the lakefront path. You have the skyline, you have Lakeshore Drive, so you still feel like really connected to the city. Watching the Chicago Marathon one year saw a runner and their guide um, go by, and I had never thought about the ways that running was or wasn't accessible to other people. A few months later, I joined a database called United in Stride. You know, it's such a like phrase in the running community, like, all you need is a pair of shoes, but it's not true for everybody. The way that running with Mark has impacted my life, it's changed my career trajectory. Like, I now work with people with disabilities in public transportation because I saw what traveling on public transit with Mark was like. I work at the Regional Transportation Authority, or RTA, which is the financial oversight for public transportation in the Chicago area. It was always a field I wanted to work in and then found this role and it's been the perfect fit. I actually talked about him in my interview for the role. The funny thing with the sight loss is, I always feel like it could have been avoided. The fact that there was some blame there really hit a bit deeper. I remember seeing Diane and my gran and my mum, like just in, in pieces, knowing that they knew something wasn't right and they kind of took the doctor's word for an answer as well. He sat on the little bottom step of the stairs and cried and I couldn't help. 
I didn't want to upset him anymore. I didn't want to talk to him about it. And I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. So I just bottled it up. It was only when the RNIB helped him that we actually started to get better. By speaking to the Royal National Institute of Blind People, I had somebody neutral that I could speak to, somebody that I could unload all their problems on. It was a huge weight lifted. Morning. Good hey, morning, mate. How are you doing? All right. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. See you too, yeah. yeah. I had been working in, uh, in the gambling industry for a number of years before that. that the the gambling industry is it. quite sort of cutthroat. You know, you're taking money off people. It really wasn't me anymore. Hello, my name's Mark. I'm calling from the RNIB. How are you doing? You okay? I wanted to start helping Good. people. Good, yeah. So I've had your details passed through to me. Um, so I chose to work for the Royal National Institute of Blind People. You see, providing advice, support, all from an empathic uh, position, because he understands the journey people are going on. The, the sort of feelings that you're feeling are very similar to um, a grieving process. When you lose your sight, all of the things that you take for granted become more difficult. The general public don't necessarily get that. You're kind of adapting and changing, and you face barriers across the whole spectrum of all of those life chances. You have to really guard it to get included in society. Mark's an example of how to crack on with that. Finishing the majors is a dream come true, but finishing at Boston just feels like the cherry on top. We don't tend to see each other that much, but when we come together, we just instantly hit it off. And it's just like we haven't ever been away from each other. You ready? Boston! Boston! Boston. Good one. After me last <laughs> marathon in London in 21, I really struggled with the running that I was doing was making himself do this thing that he was not enjoying. He did not like running. I kind of shelved that from my life well over a year. Ended up putting on quite a lot of weight. People used to look at me shocked to the core that I, I have ran marathons. You should be throwing the shot put, not running marathons. I wanted to get back into some kind of fitness. The gym that I go to is very community based. They understand my eye condition. Hi. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah. Having Suzanne there, it's a huge help. Really nice. Well done. All the way down. Come on. Suzanne's a big advocate of strength and conditioning work. Did we manage to get eight? Yeah. Oh, well done. The second set will be much easier. Really nice, well done. For someone whose vision's really limited to kind of this much, and there's all this noise around you, I can't even imagine how that feels, and he just gets on with it. Wanna jump on? It's in miles, sir. What Suzanne had given me, it was like a change of lifestyle. Since meeting Suzanne, I've just been getting quicker and quicker and quicker every time. Without her, definitely Tokyo and yeah. Boston wouldn't have been possible. You okay? Yeah. Keep running all day. I know you can. I'm at a place where I, f I feel happy. Come in, come all the way in, don't be shy. We decided before I flew out really that we would really do a uh, super workout for me to tie in with, with the six world marathon majors. Obviously, we all know it's his last marathon in two weeks in Boston. He'll get this medal that's got all the six marathons on. He'll be the second person in the world who, is, who has sight loss to do it. He'll be the first person in the UK, the first person in Europe. It's a big, big deal. <laughs> You're doing six rounds, six movements. It was so hard. There was people literally lying on the floor after they finished for this workout. Mark came up with this himself. So you can blame him, it's nothing to do with me. 
the score has been the six marathons, obviously. I'm, I'm so proud of him and so made up for him that he's decided this, committed to it, he's done it, he's done the work. Yeah, we'll get these, yeah, for sure. It's, uh, let's go with the, the rest of the collection, I think. One of the most unexpected things about Mark, he is like a major sneakerhead. He has over 500 pairs of shoes. He has a room for it in his house. What are you doing with all these shoes? A lot of my family and friends think I'm crazy when I was growing up. A lot of the older boys were kind of wearing, you know, something like this. It was all to do with like the music scene. A Britpop bands sort of started to emerge. Uh, bands like Oasis and Blur. This was kind of like the uniform to wear. I'm always sort of chasing that, that you know, the pairs, you know, that I really wanted when I was younger and I couldn't afford them. You know, you have to love someone who loves something and Mark loves shoes. It meant everything to us to have our friends and family there from Chicago and my mum came over from England. I met Scott about two and a half years ago, been dating ever since, and he is super supportive of, of the running, of guide running. He's been making a really detailed plan for the group that's coming with us. When we ran the New York Marathon, it was definitely the hardest race for Mark. The night before the race, he got some pretty tragic personal news. We found out that uh, my partner, Diane, her mum was, was dying the night before the, the race. I didn't want to be there. He didn't think he could do it. His partner's mom called him and told him, like, you have to run the race, like, you have to do this. To just know he was thinking about that the whole time and still finish a full marathon. We were definitely friends at that point, but I think our friendship has really, you know, deepened and grown in that time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We've got this close bond that I don't think I've got with anybody else, just because of the things that we've been through together. marathon weekend this is massive this is really cool there's not a lot of days in our lives where you go into it knowing that you're never going to forget it meet another six star finisher this is an unbelievable community of humans these curves are really big yeah it's like a little yeah. hurdle yeah. <laughs> when we started this it was such a smaller yes i feel like i want to go back and like shake my younger self and be like you have no idea like Thank God I said yes, it, it's changed my life, it's changed my job, it's changed like the way I look at so many different things. I feel like if you want to believe in yourself, absolutely run a marathon. If you want to believe in humanity, like you need to guide one. I know there's some people who wanted to be here this weekend um, and couldn't, so I figured this is the, the next best thing. Hello, Mark. If you just want to wish you good luck at the Boston Marathon, me and Poppy will be cheering you on from home. It's all you. Get it done. I'm trying to enjoy it. You can do it, Mark. We believe in you. Good luck in the Boston Marathon. I hope everything comes your way and a good lad. Absolutely smash it. Smash it. Smash it. All your hard work and dedication have led up to this moment, so remember to enjoy it. You're an absolute star. You always will be anyway with me, you know that. I love you. Good luck, Mark. Get this done, enjoy it, and dedicate it to all the people that helped you on this journey. And thank you, Katie. You've been an absolute treasure and he couldn't have achieved it without you. 
Enjoy it, you two. Love you. See you soon. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I find it difficult that Katie won't get any recognition for completing the six majors with me. We'll be on the left side, so yeah. just catch us over there. Perfect. Right. <laughs> good luck. Thanks. Hey, good morning. Over for Katie? She's right. done every single step of the races that I've done. Some of the races don't sort of deem her to be a participant in the race, therefore she isn't included in some of the results. I think it should even be like a special recognition. Have a good day. Well done. Smash it, all right? She's gone above and beyond to do this for somebody else and not for herself. Come on in. <laughs> okay. There will be a time when me and Katie won't run together anymore. I don't know how I'd feel about that. She's been a big part of my life since we met. I don't want to think about it too much at the minute, but it'll be a sad day when there's no more Mark and Katie, I think. everybody else around so many inspiring people here everybody's got their own problems they've got their own journey and just seeing everybody else how they cope with with uh, you know with the disability doing things a little bit differently but we're all doing the same thing it's strange the very first photo me and Katie ever had together we were at the expo in Chicago the photo just said, it's all a crazy dream until you start. And I was actually looking at that photo last night and I was just like, oh my God, like we had no idea. I get really nervous. You just always have these sort of demons in the back of your mind that's telling you, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? in all this clear road. I kind of started off quick. I like to take big strides and just let gravity take me down. Probably not the most sensible thing to do, flying down the hills and, you know, they, they pay it back later on. I always stand on his right side because his vision's in his left eye. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We have to navigate just tons of people. Mark can't see them coming on either side. They're clear. A little bumpy up here. If I miss something, if I'm not paying attention, we could take a spill. That's definitely my biggest fear. It was like such good energy. This is insane. Yeah. People were going nuts for us the whole time. It was unbelievable. Katie fires up the crowd a little bit. I enjoy the fact that she does that. 
it just makes him even louder, which is just amazing. It was around about mile 10. I wasn't anticipating any heat like that. I all of a sudden started to feel a little bit dizzy. I've been training in you know quite cold temperatures, same with Katie. Gatorade, Gatorade. I've got no depth perception, so I kind of sometimes reach for bottles and things like that and totally miss it. Water, water, water! She always Thank lets you. me know what's coming up. She can grab it as if it was left to myself. I don't think I'd be able to do it. God, so hot. Yeah. I kind of started going a little bit delirious. I kind of didn't know what I was doing. And Katie just sort of turned to me. She just said, let's just, you know, be sensible here. We've got, you know, quite a long way to go now. Just take it easy, get your breath back and we'll just take it from there. and seeing her in tears. That was pretty special. And I'm so proud. He, he deserves it. He's amazing. And so is Katie. Yeah, I had a little bit of a wobble before. Yeah. So. We were just kind of struggling. We're gonna do one more. One more. We had a conversation there about like, it didn't matter. Like it didn't matter if it took us 14 hours and we were crawling across the finish line. We had to do it together. See me in the finish line. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else matters. I've got a saying. You can't walk downhill. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so careful, careful. Careful here. We're even. Okay. Don't want any broken bones no. now. So close. One of the big things about Katie is, you know, when the going gets tough in these races, Katie's positivity always sort of seems to pull me through. Yeah! We've got to really, really help each other through the tough parts. All right, watch out for this water bottle. I 
I was so proud of Mark. I was so happy that marathon was done. You did it. You did it. It was our time. <laughs> we both knew exactly what we both put into this. I know how much it meant to her. I told you we could do it, didn't I? You did. I, you did. It, didn't I? I know how hard she'd worked, and I was just unbelievably proud. <laughs> Crossing the finish line was one thing, but I think putting that medal on Mark was just, it like hit me like, oh my God, we did it. She took the medal and then put it over my head, knowing that she wasn't gonna get one as well. Yeah, it was just one of the moments. To get to cap it off really symbolically of, of what it's meant to like do it together and be at each other's side was, I mean, I'll never forget that at all. So cool. Here, go to put back on. I could never ever pay Katie back for everything that she's done to me. I would never have done what I've done without her. To know what Mark has like taken something that was so devastating and just turned it into something so incredible and it's so inspiring. Yeah, check it out. I think we'll always be friends, you know, friends for life. Like, is that our people? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, yeah. Mark can tell me, you know, what do you think about this day in this city? And I'll buy a ticket, I'll be there. <laughs>